Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, Case 39. Today, we have a sagittal T1 weighted image through the ankle and an axial T1 weighted image through the ankle. And upon first glance, we don't see any major abnormality. But the question that I want to pose to all of you guys is, what accessory muscle is present here? Is this the flexor hallucis longus? Is it a peroneus tertius, a peroneus cortis, or a soleus? What accessory muscle is present on these images? And I want to come back here and just kind of scrutinize the way we do our search process. So obviously, you know, this is there's a T1 weight image, so the marrow is going to be nice and fat and bright. So we have the tibia here, the talus, the calcaneus. This here is, you know, the sinus tarsi. This dark structure here is the Achilles tendon, and we have the navicular here. Uh, we have part of the, you know, cuboid and the cuneiforms here. We have the muscle, you know, nothing is striking us as, you know, very abnormal, but there is an accessory muscle here that I hope everyone recognizes. And uh, I'll give you a second to ponder upon which one you think is the one that's present here. And of course, the one that's present here is an accessory soleus muscle. We can see here that there's two, this is the Achilles tendon right here on the axial image. And there's at this level, at the tibia fibular syndesmosis and below it, the soleus muscle should have already inserted onto the Achilles tendon. And if we come back here to this first image, there's too much soleus muscle that's going too far in theory. This fatty area here is known as Kager's fat pad. At about this level here, you know, this, there really should be no more muscle protruding down. But the fact that we have muscle kind of protruding into Kager's fat pad, we know that there's a soleus muscle. And on the axial image, we're very far you know, inferior, you know, kind of past the tibia fibular syndesmosis and the interosseous membrane. And we still see, you know, a uh, very prominent soleus muscle. So this is an accessory soleus muscle. We see this from time to time. We see many, there are many accessory muscles in the ankle. So I want you guys to all be aware of that. So accessory muscles, they follow the signal intensity of muscle on MRI. Notice that the muscle looked just like any other normal muscle that we see on MRI. Uh, they may have edema, though. Sometimes on T2, there will be T2 hyperintense or bright signal, particularly if there's impingement. If there, if a specific nerve is being impinged or if a tendon is being impinged, that can result in edema, and that can also result in uh, exertional compartment syndrome. You can imagine, particularly with patients that have pain with exercise, it can it's a confined space, and it can result in like a functional exertional compartment syndrome, particularly if there's pain and there's edema there. So you always want to be on the lookout for the exertional compartment syndrome associated with accessory muscles, which are why they can be clinically significant. The finding of an accessory muscle can be both unilateral or bilateral. I've seen it, you know, oftentimes unilateral, oftentimes bilateral as well. And the most common accessory muscles in the ankle in order, as listed here, are the peroneus tertius, the peroneus cortis, the flexor digitorum longus, and then the soleus. So the soleus is the fourth most common accessory muscle in the ankle. And the peroneus tertius is usually anterior lateral, right? And the proteus cortis is usually posterior lateral. And the flexor digitorum longus is seen adjacent to where the normal muscle and tendon is, and the soleus is, you know, seen exactly where I just showed it to you. And the proteus tertius uh, is, is very common. I see this almost on a weekly basis, and also the proteus cortis. The proteus tertius usually inserts onto the uh, dorsal base of the fifth metatarsal. The proteus cortis can be a little bit more variable. It can insert onto the calcaneus, the cuboid you can even insert onto the superior peroneal retinaculum. You can also insert onto the base of the fifth metatarsal. So it has many different uh, insertions that can happen. But the proteus tertius almost always inserts onto the uh, the dorsum of the fifth metatarsal. The soleus, as shown here, usually inserts onto the Achilles tendon or the posterior process of the calcaneus. So look for it, you know, kind of drooping a little bit more inferiorly into Kager's fat pad and inserting either onto the Achilles tendon or the posterior process of the calcaneus. Hope that was helpful. Tune in next week for another unknown MSK unknown case. Thank you so much for your attention.